Hey guys, welcome back to Oxygen Not Included! Clay's Amazing Space Colony Adventure Extraordinaire! My name is Twitchy, and we are going to play in Twitchy's Tremendous Trojans, where mostly we are just still having problems with water. We do, of course, have Ruby just kind of stranded on a lake, on a ladder up there, but that's not the biggest problem. One of the biggest problems we actually have is the fact that the doors still want to glitch out. So before I uh, even do anything, the first thing we do on the load is to go around and set the door permissions up again. And the next thing we want to do is try and get this uh, double water line coming out of these hot water tanks sorted. As you can see, there are a few pipes going through some of the old tanks that really, really, really need to get fixed up. So we're going to try and make sure that that can be done so that we can move more water at once. One of the big problems that we have in the game at the moment is we just do not move enough water at any one time. The uh, requirements that are abound in the base are just untenable given the systems that we actually have at the moment. So one of the other things I'm going to do is go around and isolate a few of the outside water sources outside of the main base so that we can actually power them or at least uh, feed them with water from the uh, hot but should be cold tank at the bottom left. That's the uh, water coming out of the steam geyser, this steam geyser right here, going down into the tank and we're going to use that to pump power things uh, like the carbon scrubbers down the bottom here, uh, any cooling that needs to happen with the metal working. We're even going to pump a fair bit of it up to the oxygen providers, the electrolyzers, so that we can make sure that our atmospheric suits do not run out of oxygen, because this is a problem that we have relatively regularly. Just like the whole piping issue here, I, I have this uh, serious issue that happens quite regularly in my piping, uh, where we like come out of either a bridge or going into electrolyzers or something like that. I will make a three-way junction, and it turns out three-way junctions very bad when it comes to deciding which way the water needs to go. You can see even here with the system that I've got set up, it just still doesn't quite work as well as it should. I'm not entirely sure what the reasoning for that is, so we're going to go through and try and like trace out all the different systems here and try and figure out what's going on. I think the main problem here is we just don't have the pressure after we've gone over the uh, bridge, so I'm going to put a new bridge further up the line. Clearing out the new, uh, new hot water tank that we're going to have here, also putting in some pumps into this next uh, secondary tank. We, of course, built the the bottom tank first then the next one up and then this third one up on top is going to be our big boy as you can see it's taking up the volume that the uh the other two do um combined if you will is it volume is it area i'm not sure which way we want to talk about this here because obviously in a very strictest sense it is only area we've got a length and a width right uh, but we a uh, height and a width here yeah? but obviously somewhere in here there should be the third dimension that disappears back into the screen and i'm not sure if that's actually uh, actually exists or not so at the moment what we are doing is setting Setting up the uh, filtration system for the water. Obviously, we pump dirty water, polluted water, that yellow stuff at the bottom of the screen here, into the water sieve, and then we want to take that into the cold water, well, the hot water tank before we go to the cold water tank. So another problem we've got is the gas distribution around here. One of the gases that we're starting to build up quite a lot of at the bottom is a bunch of chlorine. So we've got to try and put that onto the waste gas system. Of course, just to remind everybody, we've got the carbon dioxide being scrubbed out and also vented into space, because, you know, we can't quite take with all the carbon dioxide we've got uh, and then the um, natural gas that is around is being sent into the natural gas generators uh, next we need to deal with the chlorine i'm just going to bag that up because i don't know what to do with it um, and then beyond that we will figure out other gases polluted oxygen is the next one that i'm not entirely certain what we're going to do with but we will find uh, something okay the piping rerouting is going well and you may have noticed that we're trying to get a bunker set up in space uh, this is because anything that we build up in that space layer at the moment is creating a huge problem with the meteors coming down. Talking of huge problems, the fact that we have run out of water in the base is now starting to have a bit of a hygiene knock-on effect. As you would imagine, if you can't flush the toilets, you end up with the duplicates kind of just going everywhere. Now, I kind of wish that they would take, like, the standard broken toilet approach. I'm not sure if you guys have been into broken toilets IRL, uh, like public toilets, if you will, and you end up having to, like, wade to the urinals and then just kind of add to the puddle that is uh, building up there. I think that would be a much better system for oxygen not included to implement, because then at least all you need to do is tidy up the bathroom because i don't know about you guys i would still pee in the toilet if it was broken rather than peeing in the kitchen you know it, it's just a just a thought process there mucking around with the water with the pipes sorry seems to have uh, given us the ideal setup that we want here but i'm noticing there are definitely areas that are causing weird sort of flowbacks in the system uh one of those is the carbon scrubber in the uh the, the power generator there so we're going to try and take a separate line off further down the line to uh, not let it 
don't cycle around in circles. There is a problem going on on my screen right now, and I'm not sure if you guys have noticed what's going on. Uh, look at those pipes up there. Yeah, it's pumping, and it's pumping polluted water. That is because the automation did not get set up on the pump before the pump actually got fixed into place. So we have a, a big problem. I'm hoping that Ruby will come along and fix this problem for me. Turns out delivery only, so we have to sit and wait all night. Uh, it's one of the uh, features that they've tweaked as the game has been developed that I find uh, to be very, very annoying. Uh, like, we're on highest priority. Red alert. Why are they sleeping? Why can't we get them to work on this? I mean, if I want to drive them into the ground as uh, the, the overseer, surely I should be able to do that. I mean, I know it's not the ideal way to play and maybe they should put like some other sort of system like the morale checks or something after they've been up for a couple of days uh that would like kind of balance it out i, I think that would be a much better way there uh, still despairing at the lack of water in the tank and the only thing we can really do is hope that this tank here starts outputting relatively quickly we are of course waiting for it to cool down uh and i'm looking at the number of germs here wondering if uh we're gonna actually be able to get rid of those germs before the cold water tank starts pumping out we've got about a thousand germs per tile there it's not terrible it's not the worst we've ever had uh, but it is going to be a little bit of a problem going through and thinning down walls walls so that we can get to the pipes that we need to get to and i'm uh, hideously hideously worried about the fact that duplicates might be peeing in the water system there trying to get the water to go up to the oxygenators up there i really feel like we are running out of pressure somehow uh, i'm not entirely sure how we do this but then looking down the line no it's actually hooked up to another pump and it's expecting the pump to push in the other direction so if we get rid of that pump the one coming out of our main water tank it should all balance out for us and i'm not hoping anyway that should work out trying to figure out the uh the piping system on the fly is actually a very pretty, pretty awkward one especially as i also know that they are changing the piping simulation like every update or so because it's it's a hard thing to do you know if you've got a bunch of pipes all lying around like how do you how do you make priority what systems do they work in but anyway we figured it out and the water now now flows up top that was like big problem number one now solved not only do we have the electrolyzers running and filling up the atmospheric suits with oxygen because you know that is very very important but we also have a sink working i mean we might not have toilets but at least we've got a sink eh Next plan involves making greater use of this hydrogen-powered anti-entropy device. We have it up in the uh, top right of our cold water tank here, but I was thinking maybe we could do a little bit better. Maybe we could pump some of the hydrogen that is cooling down the hydrogen that is around it, not the hydrogen that we're putting in, because obviously the hydrogen that we put in gets completely consumed. But the hydrogen that is around it is getting chilled to about th minus 30 degrees. We're going to pump that through the uh, cold water tank and then vent it on the other side, so it also then brushes across the top of the hot cold water tank on its way to getting re-chilled at the top right. I think that should all work out pretty well. Down here we are making a tank for the chlorine still, just to remind you guys, wondering what everybody is doing and how it's taking them so long to get down there. The other thing that I'm worried about, as you might remember, I was trying to make a bigger reservoir for our... Um natural gas guys up the top there i'll just let you know despite the fact that those jobs have been ordered nobody gets around to it the entire time we are doing this episode it's probably something i'm gonna to have to concentrate on next episode just to make sure that the priorities are high enough i take a quick look over my base and i realize there is a lot of urine around so i just like do a wide scanner a top tip for you here if you don't know how to like zoom out far enough to be able to like drag a big box like that over your entire base if you press alt and s you get the screenshot mode at which point you can zoom to any level you want and then you just press alt and s again and it just puts you back in normal mode without rezooming so you can then just like click your k go yes i want to sweep all across my base thank you very much we are currently in a red alert because there is power not flowing to the gas sorter down below so we've got to make sure that that gets sorted mainly because it is actually the power line that runs through all my metal production and stuff like that so i mean that also needs to be absolutely certain that it's working well the amount of urine around the base is actually steadily growing despite the fact that we have done that big sweep so we gotta uh, be a little bit worried about that this is why i want to inc uh, increase the cooling because the thing that is stopping our main water tank full filling up is the fact that we've got it waiting here a quick look at the natural gas generator on the left hand side of the base shows me that it is going to become active in about seven cycles so I'm particularly looking forward to that looking also down at the oil production facility down here definitely needs a lot of work a lot of uh, things have been put in place but nothing has actually been built uh, things including like the oil well uh, to actually turn the geyser into a producer and it looks like it's just going to throw it 
on the floor so I put a pump next to it and then a little waste container at the top there so that when the filter filters out the oil whatever else is left <coughs> petroleum is going to get fil filtered over that way I don't know if there's going to be any other materials down there there might even be a little bit of water around or stuff like that so maybe we need to figure out a secondary filtering system maybe we filter out the petroleum send that off to the generators and then filter out the uh, other bad things that we want or store whatever is left after that that would be pretty good going around and putting down the ladders that are needed just to make sure that all these jobs get finished here uh really just want that tank to get finished so that we can st start sending power everywhere else but you might notice that we are actually starting to have a bit of a power issue all around this of course is a hangover from the power cuts we had uh, last time as you can see the gas geysers are starting to uh, completely be dormant every single one of my geysers i believe are actually dormant at this particular moment in time cycle 388 write it down in your diaries chaps it is when all of the gas geysers have turned off there's going to be another time at some point in the future when once again all their cycles uh, meet up with each other and uh, determine that they're all going to be dormant but until that time has uh past and elapsed and we start getting the generators back we're using the pump down the bottom here to uh, take all the vaporized natural gas and put that back into the system and hopefully through some sort of positive feedback system the power that is generated will power the pump which will make more gas rah -de rah rah hopefully we should be able to just keep moving on forwards here worried about the uh, the germs uh, thankfully because we have got clean water not polluted water they won't spread uh, and it looks like I've got everything now sorted for these tanks so I'm just going to make sure that I've got everything that I need the uh, automation wire coming out the side clear the bottom of the tanks up uh, people peeing in the middle of the night we're definitely gonna have to try and figure out something about that I can only assume that because the um, the power is off the water is not flowing with no water flow we've got no water for the, the toilet still uh, we're really just waiting on this actually uh, this water this water tank here would be a wonderful if we could get it to just to cool down below 20 degrees I believe at the moment it is something like 26 degrees and I suppose we could technically pump that out that way but I'm feeling that it would be much better if we pump much colder water into the base we already had a little bit of time where we were pumping uh, 30 40 degree water in and like all oh, my bristle blossoms have died well they've not died they they just stopped growing uh, and, and things like that so uh, th these are all things that knock on effects from the panic decisions we made earlier uh, I'm having a bit of trouble here with Brum he keeps wanting to go down underneath the build order to deliver the uh, the items needed for it and then he would build and then he would be trapped inside the tank which was a little bit awkward talking of a little bit awkward with a slime lung trying to make its way into a tank full of food poisoning we've ended up with this really awkward line of no germs in the middle and that just happens to overlay directly onto my um my germ sensor there so for this top tank i've decided to go for a different setup you can see that we're having a two a germ sensors which we're going to set up through an and gate and then only when both germ sensors tell us that there are indeed no germs which actually it turns out we've got to detect the germs and then tell it that that, that is not you know it's a bit weird but because we got this all sorted it should uh, eradicate any sort of situation like this building up where you can see as i say the two types of germs are leading uh, are leaving a small segment in the middle that was not really um doing us any favors it, it was clear but we were pumping germy water because it wasn't exactly where the the pump was so we'll have to try and work on that you may or may not have noticed that the cooling loop is actually firing there and i love watching all these little gas um packets i'm gonna say uh, up together at any junction uh, that uh, gas storage there gas reservoir was just saying that it didn't have an outflow pipe and I'm like why do you need an outflow pipe you're literally just a storage uh, and then one of the many bugs that I keep uh, discovering like I'll draw out a, um, a job and then suddenly like bam the numbers are still there but the job doesn't happen or the job gets done and the numbers get left behind there are a few um, long-term UI issues like that still in this game which is a bit of a shame but you know this game is coming on leaps and bounds every every update so can't really um, moan too much I mean I can I could I could moan as much as I like all right we do the drastic decision of actually starting to pump this water out of the tank here unfortunately we uh also don't have any power so whilst we have made the decision that yes 25 degrees is cold enough uh, um it's going to take a little bit of time to actually go through and work because of the power situations uh but thankfully this cooling pump up here runs on its own hydrogen powered cooling um and also we've put down a few hamster wheels in places we didn't have them before just through these times of lean power just to make sure that the vital systems such as the water cooling and the water pumping and stuff like that continue on as a planned quick note that the water coming out of the cold water tank that's a little bit too hot going into my main water tank is getting picked up and pumped to the toilet so the heat 
it shouldn't actually be too much of an issue as long as the water doesn't back up too much and then like the hot water tanks are starting to cause us problems. But we've got another little issue that we want to do here. You can see this little spit of land on the edge here. It's actually stopping the hydrogen flowing back up towards the cooling device. So that is something that we need to do. And this is here the thing that we're actually setting up. Now, I have turned the atmospheric suit checkpoint off because we do not have the power to keep the oxygen uh, running. But I also want to come down and try and do uh, try and get this oil well running, which means sending duplicates into areas that are far too hot for them. So people such as Sir Steve, Captain Subs and Brum are all getting just a, a little bit singed by the area. I believe Wise as well because he's the man who carries everything around. Uh, so I'm sending people in. We're getting as much done as we can before I'm like, oh no, my duplicates are going to die. At which point I lock the door, send all the people to the uh, the med bay, uh, wait for everybody to be healed and then repeat the cycle uh, because one of the way, one of the things that we could have actually saved ourselves from this serious power outage is by having a, a serious oil supply so that we could make enough pet petroleum to put it into the generator and make ourselves more power than all our natural gas generators together put produce. Um, I don't know, maybe I've oversold it there, but you know, that probably would have been a much better plan rather than just peeing everywhere and trying to wait it out, which is actually my plan right now. Uh, these guys going up top, I was a little confused by this because I was fairly sure that I'd actually stopped people traveling this way, but it did give me access to a few more weasel warts up there, which I am all about because we are trying to chill our br br bristle blossoms down as much as possible, but obviously the fact that they're being irrigated by too hot water is really kind of struggling with that situation there. Another thing that we're struggling with is the power in this hot water tank. I thought I'd put everything down, but no, there's always one cable left that you uh, forget to do. But the water is pumping and things are going around. And I'm noticing that we've got some sort of weird black um, black liquids being dropped around the anti-entropy device. I didn't really uh, notice it at the time. But let's um, take a moment here to sit and watch it. Look at that. What is this right here? Well, I can tell you it's actually carbon dioxide. Uh, it was a little bit weird watching it like um, crystallize out of the air. I didn't think that it was going to crystallize at like what at minus 30 or whatever it was I was thinking personally that it was like minus 70 but as we all know that's actually liquid nitrogen temperatures and that's why that is stuck in my head but the pumping seems to be working well the chlorine is getting uh, chilled the hydrogen is getting chilled everything's being pumped around and cooling everything down as much as we can do so and obviously as we are emptying the cold water tank uh, the volume of the area is getting less that means there's less stuff with thermal mass if you will less thermal mass uh, and then we can like start cooling it quicker whether that will actually work out like that or not i mean we, we will see but that's the theory that i'm running with at the moment okay looking at the uh the circuitry we have back here you see the uh, the two circuits down below that we made to control the flow of the water uh, constructing something called an rs nor latch well it turns out once you've uh, researched computing they give you a circuit called an rs nor latch wonderful beautiful so i actually end up using that to um power whether water comes into the tank or not uh, of course we have two hydro sensors one at the top one at the bottom the one at the bottom when it is dry turns the pump on and the one at the top when it's wet turns the pump off um, that's just nice ways of making sure that polluted water isn't coming in when you're tidying it up when you're pumping it out right uh, it all works out pretty well shadow is actually ill uh, he's not he's not like injured like subs is from the from the, the, the damage of the hot uh, he has co contracted slime lung uh, thankfully Ruby is our number one uh, uh, medicine person here and also Tommy comes along and does a little bit of uh, part-time shifts in there as well making sure everybody feels uh, great uh, another three is a uh, drowning in liquid uh, chlorine over there no problem it just keeps him clean right he is the chef after all uh, watching the carbon dioxide of course liquefy is amazing I I'm starting to feel like maybe we should try and like pump that up and uh, store it in a really cool place I would love to have a couple of tiles filled with liquid carbon dioxide. I think that would be quite an achievement to aim for. Putting down a tile just to make sure that our deodorizers are actually doing the job that they are supposed to do, because of course, if it doesn't have anything to attach to, can't do its job, which is a bit of a shame. Another thing that is a bit of a shame is the fact that this uh, room that around the gas generator here, the gas geyser, uh, is very small. And I'd like to, to open that up a little bit. So I've gone and put down walls for as far a distance as we can. Of course, we've got a major corridor running to the side of it. So that's uh, kind of a uh, uh, restrictive space there. So we've got to just go with what we can. One thing that I do keep noticing when they're building this area is it's all very dependent on that gas suit at the top there. Uh, we do quite often have a situation where the gas suit, the atmospheric suit, sorry, is charging up and then people can't get in and deal with the orders that need to be built for the water flow um, regulator. Are we going to call it a water flow regulator? I think we will. Okay, so four or five duplicates that had actually received damage from going down into the hot area. We are down to our last two needing to be uh, repaired. We 
going to say that people get repaired? Not people, duplicates. I mean, duplicates, people, I don't know. Answers on a postcard down below, guys. I would like to know, do you think these guys are people or are they just mindless automata only doing what the overseer tells them? I mean, that's not, I mean, we think we can actually come down on the line here and say no, they're not because they do have wants and needs that are uh, overridden by the overseer. So, for instance, when I hit red alert, they'll sleep rather than come and deal with the stuff, which uh, I disagree with, but, you know, I suppose it is trying to give it some sort of uh, veneer of, um, what sort of agency to the duplicates because, you know, I would like my duplicates to have some sort of agency, but then also, could you imagine how bad you would feel? I'd feel bad. I have done some horrors to these guys just in the name of trying to figure out what's going on, let alone the horrors that I've done fully knowing what will happen, such as trying to get the uh, oil pump started down below in an area that's far too hot for them. I wouldn't I wouldn't put anyone that experiences into that sort of situation, but I will put these uh, small program routines into that sort of situation. Gas generators on the left-hand side are starting to get up to the serious uh, not being dormant anymore. That's what I'm trying to say. The, ga the gas guys are over there is not being dormant anymore. And also I'm replacing these liquid tiles uh, underneath this sort of weird battery area that we've got as a hangover from the start of the base with carpet tiles because it was just uh, collecting poor liquids that we didn't want to have there so uh, yeah filling it in and we'll push all of that out we're starting to run out of water in the coal tank and this is great it does also again still lead me to be a little bit worried about the amount of germs in there but i don't think there's too much to worry about one thing i am worried about is this hydrogen just kind of being vented off or in fact sorry being turned into power without actually being useful uh, we could actually send the hydrogen line upwards rather than down uh, and it'll go connect to the other hydrogen line which will go off to a cooling loop and keep everything nice and dark. nice and cold That's that's what I'm trying to go for. Uh, medicine packs are being made just to make sure that everybody can deal with their slime long better. Uh, and the uh, steam gas geyser is back and uh, active. I don't know if I told you guys that last time, but it is active, which means that the whole cooling system that we were trying to do before the gas geyser started working again failed. But we knew that that was going to happen because we only started about halfway through its dormancy period. So the real question is actually next cycle. I'm going to call it cycle, even though like they call the day cycle. But next time that the gas geyser, the steam geyser, that sorry goes dormant will we be able to cool it quick enough i don't know uh, obviously we've got a whole bunch of other cooling systems on the go now so we can definitely do it a little bit quicker than we used to and i've also got like this new plan where we've got all this carbon dioxide that we're throwing off into space so maybe we could just like store the carbon dioxide somewhere as uh, just a gas in a room and then pump all the heat that we can through it using the utilities this is something that i've not actually really done much of in this game playthrough uh, and then we could just send that super heated carbon dioxide off into space to get vented and get out of here i think that's probably a good idea okay what am i doing here i'm trying to expand the stables because you know what those puffs are just too crowded they are all very sad and want to not be so crowded in uh, i've killed also the puffs that were producing oxalite rather than producing the slime because of course this is an area where i only want to produce slime producing anything else other than that it's a waste it is literally a waste what are we going to do with oxalite here i don't know I, I would really like to just have like some nice slime so we can keep our mushroom turning over because obviously with our bristle blossom being dead the the uh, mushrooms are pretty much the only source of serious food that we have going on at the moment uh, obviously we can give people meal lice and mil, mil uh, what, what does the mill lice get turned into? Lice loaf, that's the one. Uh, but with no water, we can't make lice loaf. And also, lice loaf is quite a low-ranking food. I don't really want to be giving my uber-good duplicates such terrible, terrible, terrible food. The cooling loop seems to actually be working, but nowhere near as well as I would hope. Obviously, the um, anti-entropy device only gets rid of uh, 80 BTUs each cycle, uh, and that, that would be... Well, each, each second, sorry, not each cycle. I've got to stop using the word cycle. I mean cycle is in, like, a cyclic nature, a, a herd. Hurts a, a thing that happens, um, but obviously with cycle being also the word for day, that's a little bit awkward. I think we're finally at the point where we can start thinking about the power situations, though, especially as we are now sending our people back down. Let's see uh, exactly how much gets done down here. There are a bunch of slicks that are around turning the carbon dioxide into uh, whatever it is they produce. Uh, I think it's uh, oil, not petroleum. If it is oil, great. Maybe that is something that we can do with the vast stocks of carbon dioxide. I wonder, I wonder if the slicksters are bothered by excessive heat. And I mean excessive heat. I wonder if we can keep a slickster farm somewhere, pump all the carbon dioxide that we're talking about into there send some cooling loops through um i say cool heating loops but it's cooling the other end of the system so we heat the carbon dioxide up and cool whatever it is that is coming through it uh and then just let the slicksters destroy the carbon dioxide and turn it into oil i mean that that would be great another thing that is great is this gas geyser is 
finally actually um, active again. It, it spent uh, very many cycles dormant. I think it was something like 70 cycles dormant. And now we have it up and running again, though I am disappointed at the size of the generator room that we actually have connected to this gas generator. Maybe, maybe we can uh, produce a larger room underneath. It's something that we really do need to keep an eye on. But it looks like we're starting to pr provide enough power to keep things ticking over, but not enough to actually keep a uh, serious store of power. We're not, we're not power positive at the moment. We are nearly breaking even with a few rolling black brownouts, which, you know, that, that's fair enough. That gives us a situation where we can uh, start trying to work the oil situation down below, turn that oil into petroleum, put the put that into a generator and then the petroleum generator produces more power one petroleum generator produces more power than i actually consume across the entirety of my base but i will see you then when we're going to do that ladies and gentlemen because i have run out of time my major aims for next week are going to be trying to get that rocket going and of course the water but i'll see you then when we're gonna do that bye